um, the first thing that uh, that affects the sound in a, in a room which has analog equipment is the wiring. Okay, um, I use WireWorld is the brand of cable that I use um, for my interconnect. In other words, my my uh, my tape machine, my D to A converter all comes up into my console with WireWorld. Uh, recently, uh, I started using a harmonic. Uh, technology uh, wires which have a completely different sound than my wire world wires so what happens is the first thing that I decide to do is, is listen to the the project that I have I kind of listen to it with both wires to determine which one uh, suits it and there's no way of determining that in advance this wire is a little bit more open and clear the other wire is a little bit more for want of a better word earthy has a little bit more texture in the low end and it's a little smoother so um, one thing that I do is use the equipment I use the equalizers and the compressors as signal path enhancers before I use them as equalizers or compressors, okay? Um, each one of these pieces of gear has a specific sound. Uh, every, every piece of gear everywhere has a specific, uh, specific sound. It's just the way this room is set up, you can use them as sonic enhancement rather than just a way to get from point A to point B in a transparent way, okay? Some of them are more transparent than others. Um, for example, the, uh, the Manly compressor, the, vari the variable mu compressor, used as a gain stage, has a very full, rich sound, okay? So if something comes in and it's very thin, I will immediately go to that and I'll try to enhance it with that just in a passive way, okay? I can compare that to a, an amplifier I have here, uh, which we built here, the Sterling Sound Built, which basically has the same, it's the same concept, but it has a different sound. So the wires and the equipment as a signal path enhancer are something that I do on every project. Um, the fact that we get, I'd say 70% of our stuff now comes up on digital files rather than analog tape. Uh, it's really important to get to, to have a war, kind of a warming or, a, or a, uh, a, an analog type enhancement. And I think that's one of the great things about Sterling is that we have some of this gear. Okay, so then we move on. The next stage would be equalization. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five different equalizers. Each one of them is good for different things, but you never really know which different things are going to be good for until you hear the project. So I can use each of those equalizers to either add bass, roll bass off, add mid-range, add top end, all the things that equalizers do, but each one of these does it in a different way, different electronics, okay? So I need to take the, I, you know, Without being able to spend a week on a, on a, a single project to try every single thing that we have in the room, I need to make a decision on a fly. Well, this equalizer will work for that vocal, okay? My, uh, my API equalizer will add low mid-range better than my manly will for certain things. I need to be able to translate that in, in, immediately, okay? Now, on a project like uh, a couple of years ago, I did Bob Dylan's catalog, 16 albums. Okay, now this was, uh, was funded by Sony Legacy, and we really had the time to be able to experiment. In this, way, in this case, I could really do, use the different equalizers and try all kinds of different things and compare them, but most of the time I don't have the time. Most of, you know, we generally work uh, in, in one day on an album. Eight hours is the maximum, nine hours maximum, okay? Anywhere between four and nine hours. So I need to be able to plug these things in equalization-wise. Next thing is compression, limiting, and compression. You know, I have three or four lim limiter compressors. What do we use those for? Those are for kind of changing the position of things in the mix relative to the, the impact that you're trying to create. You know, frequently the drums will be too loud, okay? And by the drums being loud, it kind of pushes back the melodic uh, elements of the mix. So how do you push the drums back? You need to compress them. How do you compress them? Different compressors have different sounds, different speeds have a different effect on, on, the, on the percussive aspect, okay? Uh, another thing that happens is uh, in, in, the, in the bass area. Uh, if the bass is, is very warm and wide, you might want to make it a little bit more compact so it, it, it just kind of musically doesn't get in the way of the rhythmic elements of the mix. So I, you know, I have a couple of different compressors here. I have, I have these pendulum audio compressors and you know, one is a tube and one is a solid state and they have a completely different sound. So again, one of those things, if I have the time, I'll, I'll try both of them. If I don't have the time, I need to make a decision on a fly. Um, then we move, uh, you know, we have a couple of different equalizers. We have an equalizer here that Sterling, uh, our text designed, which is just a bass and treble control. We put it at the end. Uh, the concept is a lot of times you have exactly what you want, but you just want it to be just a little more trebly or a little more bass, the way you would do it in your car stereo. Okay, so we have an equalizer for that. Um, 
Then you move into the digital area where you're doing something a little bit different now. You're taking what you've done and you're trying to make what you've done sound as loud as possible for the medium of the CD, okay? Uh, this is where uh, uh, mastering gets a little bit more complicated and you have to make a little bit more of a decision on your priorities. How important is volume or how important is the, is the music in terms of what you think will max out the intensity of the music? Just because something is louder doesn't necessarily mean it has more impact. Of course, if you're a little bit simple, you would think that if you, just because it's louder, it has more impact. But then you realize sometimes if you just turn it up or turn it down, you've lost some impact by making it louder. Why does that happen? Because digital can only be so loud on a CD. All right, so we need to walk that line between the loud CD and enhancing the impact of the, of, of, uh, of the product. So we have, I have a series of uh, digital compressors here. Uh, one, one of them custom designed by Zesis. Uh, which is very transparent. I also have a regular standard uh, L2, which, which really does have a sound. It has a sound to the point where you really need to equalize differently if you are going to use that. So again, my first question to my clients, what's your goal? What do you want? Do you want you, do, does your CD need to be the loudest CD that you listen to on the day you take it home? Or are you okay with it being less loud but have, possibly have more impact? So, you know, we have something to plug in here for basically everything, and uh, I haven't embarked on the plug-in software that we have in Pyramix or some of the uh, some of the new things uh, that are coming out but uh, in uh, the next few months I'll be working a little bit with the audio cube to try to develop uh, the, the plug-in software in the audio cube to, to uh, correlate with what I already do possibly make the CDs a little bit sound a little bit better give me a little bit more creative control a little bit more flexibility to be able to do some new things keep it fresh and uh, that's, that's basically what we got here